Thank you for joining the Active Surrey Helping People Become More Active Physical Activity Awareness Training today. My name is Ruth Hards and I'm Health Leader Active Surrey. Active Surrey is the active partnership for Surrey. We cover the whole of the county and we're one of 43 active partnerships in England. We're a network of locally led, non-profit, strategic organisations and we bring together local people and local organisations to increase physical activity levels. Our whole aim and purpose of Active Surrey is to help all of the residents in Surrey realise the benefits of a more active way of life, but especially those people that need it the most. So those who are inactive and those facing inequalities. So in Surrey, we know that 190,000 adults, that's just under one in five adults, are wholly inactive, which means they do, the, they do less than 30 minutes of exercise a week. We also know that nearly half of older adults aged 65 plus are actually doing less than the recommended physical activity guidelines. And sadly, those people facing long term health conditions are twice as likely to be inactive as those without. So it's really great to have you here today so we can work together to get all of the residents in Surrey moving more. So I'm going to hand you over to Isabel. Um, she can introduce herself and um, we'll start the training. So thanks very much. Thank you, Ruth. Hi, everyone. I'm I'm Isabel. Um, I'm also um, part of a, a PCN um, and I'm a social prescriber along with health coach. So I'm delighted today to be um, the presenter on behalf of Active Surrey for um, today's training. So um, I know that most of you uh, from from the, the, the titles that I've seen coming in um, are also um, social prescribers. So that's wonderful. So we'll, we'll have lots of things in common that will come across as potentially some of the more challenging barriers when we have conversations with individuals about activity and the levels of them. So today we're going to be um, covering off the definitions and the benefits of physical activity, um, you know, the various formats in which they come, national guidelines, um, ideas and tips on how to stay active and that all important question of those common barriers, the positive conversation skills, which we're all well versed in doing, but it's always nice to try and garner some more tips and, and to, you know, empower us to have the confidence to do that. And then the key thing is, well, where, you know, where do we sort of signpost people to and what resources are ava available both locally and nationally? So those are the key things, lots to cover off and, and there'll be lots of detail in, in some of the slides. So Ruth mentioned um, a little, um, well, there's two questions actually that we're going to ask now and, and also the same two questions at the end of our session today. So. These two quick questions, Ruth's going to send out a poll, and, and they are simply this. If you could kindly answer on a scale of one to 10, 10 being brilliant, how important it is in having conversations about being active with others um, with you. And also on a scale of one to 10, 10 also being the top, top end, how confident are you in having conversations about being more active with others? So if you could just um, have a quick think on that and hit your... Um, your responses and then we'll just give you a couple of seconds to do that um, and basically what you can see here we've got a real mix in terms of the, the first question we're through from um, six right up to ten in terms of the importance of physical activity conversations and then in terms of how confident you are in having those conversations again a real mix from people kind of being three right the way up to eight so hopefully we can um, we can help and, and support your your knowledge and and, and we'll re look at those scores at the end of the session as well OK, so we're going to carry on and just a little bit of um, well, it's fun, but it's also important. I'm, I'm not sure how many of you will have heard of the uh, Flamingo test, but this is a really good indicator about sort of our balance and is it's one of the unsung physical skills that we all need to continue to develop to develop as we um, age. And, um, you know, so having the, the um, ability to have good balance is an indicator of our brain health. Um, and Kyoto University in Japan, they they basically set up this test and, and involved 1300 men and women, um, roughly in the age group of, of you know, sort of 45 up to 60 to stand on one leg with their eyes open and then keep their balance for longer than 20 seconds. So it's basically a sound measurement for brain health. Um, and most, um, most 53 year olds who could stand on one leg for 10 seconds with their eyes closed were most likely to be fit and well in a further 13 years time. But the key thing about this test is 
even if you weren't to kick off in the great manners. And I hope everyone gets to do it a little bit later on in their own time. And Ruth's going to send out the slides. So it's going to have the averages in terms of age groups. The, the point is, if, if you're not, you know, as great as you could be at the beginning, if you practice and practice makes perfect for everything in life. If you practice, it's going to improve literally in, in four weeks. So here are the age ranges of, um, you know, what they, they consider to be good for your age range. So 42 seconds, for instance, age range 40 to 49 is a good indicator. If you can stand not with your eyes closed, with your eyes open doing that, that would be great. And for that particular um um, age range um, if you were to do them with your eyes closed for 13 seconds that would be would be excellent so as I say this is going to go out a bit later on and perhaps you could have a good um, go yourselves to improve your balance because ultimately this reduces falls and it's one of the key things we need to promote so what is physical activity well it comes in lots of various forms we've all got ideas of what that is most people would, I guess, think, oh, you know, it means going to the gym, but there's so much more above and beyond that, because let's face it, the majority of, of, of us, when we hear the word gym, are filled with dread, um, and that environment itself can be, you know, quite daunting for many, if, if it's somewhere that you're not used to going or you want to start using, which you will, um, but small steps, and that's what it's all about. So, Physical activity is all about active li living. And I think that's a nice way of putting that into a conversation with someone because it's, as I said before, it's less daunting um, than the word gym or exercise. So the key thing here when we're talking to everyone about physical activity is any movement and every movement counts. So it's not just this structured fitness or exercise or sport. It could involve you know, traveling to work, um, you know, getting off the, the train station if, if we're all still going into work, because that's another thing. But if, if you are traveling into work, then you could get off maybe a stop before and walk the rest, doing more household chores, which involve, you know, stretching, lifting up, bending down or things we just do for fun. So the terminology is critical as to how we position these conversations with everyone. And um, so we've circled active li living because we've you know seen that this is a much more uh, pleasing um, description of how we can get everybody a little bit more interested in the benefits of being physically active. So there are different intensities of activity. Um, obviously, we want to stay away from the sedentary because that's not good for anyone. But, you know, what do we mean? We say to people, look, you need to be doing at least um, some moderate exercise or encourage not you know we're not um, preaching or telling anyone but we're in, we're encouraging everyone to do sort of moderate exercise and that what, what does that mean it's just it means anything that would get the heart beating faster heart rate up so you're feeling slightly warmer a, you know a, a little bit out of breath and the talk test for anyone's a really good way of gauging um you know, if they're still able to talk really is a, good, is a good thing, but that's moderate. So everyone is different. So someone's fast work walk might be moderate for them. I'm a fast walker, everybody complains about that. And it might be vigorous for someone else, but it's your tempo, it's how you set yourself. So the key message here is the best thing people can do is just to move away from being sedentary. So sitting down for long periods and not moving you know it's critical to our well-being so it's not necessarily to aim for vigorous it's to aim for having this uh, you know weaved into your everyday life now that this is the change to sort of you know living longer better if you like so really what what is the stats what are the stats about how active we are so you, you can see some here and, and nearly a third unfortunately um, of, of our, our population spend up to six hours sitting every day and and actually on a weekend that can be longer so you know one in five men and one in four women are classed physically inactive and um, you know that's not going to be good for health later and that's going to have impact on your health and there are many reasons behind this, um, and it's it's not really a new problem. But the, the key thing was lockdown. Really, that was the the, the criti critical destruction of all our sort of activity. Um, you know, when that happened on and off for the, the, the years that it happened. But you know, everybody's got a car on the whole. They're reduced manual jobs. 
and home entertainment means that you know everything's at our fingertips so you know this wasn't like it, it was for previous generations and on the whole i mean by way of example i was looking in the loft at my parents house not too long ago and i was looking at what a size 10 was back in 1984 for instance and the size 10 then compared to the size 10 now well that size 10 would have been a zero um, because there's no chance that that's that waist size of a 10 was the same as it is today they've increased that to you know for, for the human race i guess but we are less physically active as as the previous generations because the modernity of, a, of our lives has uh, has made that so so this isn't bad news the good news is on all of this people do want to change and they want to, to understand how they can do that and engage more in physical activity and what's low cost for them to do that. Um, so, you know, seven out of 10 people generally want to get fitter and healthier because they know that that manages, you know, long-term conditions and even prevents those, which we're going to go into a little bit later. What are the benefits? Well, on the whole, I know that you all know what they are, but let's just um, talk through it and, and you know, get some um, bigger facts in to, to really how they benefit our lives. So it says on this slide, you know, prevention of medical conditions to maintain strength and balance and motor skills. You can read that. But more importantly, new news came out in medical news today back in March 2023 of a large analysis um, of meta studies that found exercise, physical activity, movement, active living, however we're gonna position our words, is more beneficial for conditions such as anxiety and depression than standard psychotherapy or med medications. So this new study found, and as I say, it's in medical news um, today, it came out in March, uh, yes, March 2023, um, it found that essentially all forms of exercise produce significant mental health benefits and the shorter high intensity exercise programs produce the greatest effects. So an expansive analysis of existing research concludes that physical activity should be viewed as a first choice treatment for people living with mental health issues. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this this was led by um, Dr. Ben Singh, who is a promoter of physical activity and says it is one and a half times more effective at reducing mild to moderate symptoms of depression and psychological stress and anxiety than medication or cognitive behavior therapy. So these are the benefits of physical activity by statistics. So we can see on this um, uh, slide that, look, hands down, hip fractures are reduced up to 68%. 68%, that's phenomenal in, in falls and, you know, hip fractures. Um, for people that are actually, you know, involved in physical activity more, that's something that they're going to prevent as they progress through their lives. And, and we all know that type 2 diabetes is largely avoidable. So the, uh, the overarching cause of, of this disease is obesity um, brought on by, you know, a more sedentary lifestyle and the choices that we make, including diet. So Diabetes UK say that this disease actually impacts the NHS and eye watering 6 billion a year. So the fact that the number of diabetics in the UK has topped about 5 million and is still rising. You know, that's quite concerning news for us all, really. And every week, that particular condition is responsible for, these are the st stats that I've pulled out of Diabetes UK just recently, it's responsible for 770 strokes, 590 heart attacks, and 2,300 cases of heart failure every week. And every hour, um, a sufferer has to have a leg, foot or toe amputated. So, you know, these are terrible outcomes for individuals um, and, you know, a major contributing factor to soaring sort of waiting lists and, and GP appointments. So, you know, we can really be impactful in how we pass this message on to those that we're speaking to and, and give them the tools and information to really absorb why physical activity is so important to all our lives. So strength and balance, we talked about balance a little earlier, but you know, the key thing here is 
relaxed. Muscle and bone strengthening and balance activities are important across our entire lifespan and for different reasons. So we want to develop strength and build healthy bones during our childhood and young adulthood. The key thing is then to maintain that strength in adulthood in order to delay the natural decline in muscle mass and bone density that occurs from around 50 years of age. So maintaining our function in later life. So I know, I mean, I, I, I like to, you know, do something every day. I'm, I'm 52 and a half and, and I, you know, cardio for me was a big thing. It still is. And I like to box as well. But one of the key things that I, I know that has, I can see a difference in how I'm, I'm behaving in terms of my physiology and physicality is that I, I'm, I am doing more weights and that's through either body weights or, or dumbbells up to, you know, 5 kg, 7.5 kg, just to maintain strength because you, you lose that muscle mass as you age. So the strength and balance. So this, this graph, the blue and green, is, is evidence to suggest that muscle strength and bone strength um, and balance ability increased in childhood and peaks in early adulthood had eventually is on a decline, but aging in better health across our life course can reduce disease and disability in old age because we all want to remain independent and we want our loved ones to remain independent and we want our communities to remain independent. So the graph here shows the difference between the two, between two people's functional capacities and how this affects their aging process. So you can see that on the the green line by maintaining a greater level of strength and balance we can maintain and prolong our quality of life and slow the rate of decline so this is again to reiterate the importance of strength and balance as a physical activity and these and these are often sort of overlooked or forgotten bits in the actual guidelines that we are all aware of so there was, um, this was put together, the five ways to, to well-being. So um, this is um, a slide that was put together by the New Economics Foundation and is used now widely by MIND and the NHS and several other organi organizations. And so after research, they found that, that, the build, that building these five actions into our day-to-day -day lives are really important for, for well-being. So, you know, being active is key. Do what we want, you know, and we enjoy and do more of it to boost your mood. So being active is really key of one of those fives for, you know, enjoying our lives um, well. So the chief medical officer, when he put um, his big report together back in 2019, said this. And it's beautiful. It's one of the best strap lines I've come across. If physical activity were a drug, we would refer to it as a miracle cure due to the great many illnesses it can prevent and help treat. And we need to, to realise this more and impart that knowledge to um, all the lovely people that we're coming into contact with in our roles and our community. So what are the guidelines? As I said before, I'm pretty sure most of us know these, but it's just good to, to go through them as a tribe again and to, to support one another as to, you know, what we can be discussing more. So national guidelines now say strengthening activity. We've touched that. Build strength, improve balance, and keep your muscles and bones and joints strong. The cardiovascular activity, be active by including moderate to vigorous and very vigorous activities as we improve, as we go on doing our daily living of activity and to minimize our sedentary time by breaking up the periods of inactivity. So NHS say 150 minutes per week of moderate activity or 75 minutes per week intense activity. That's all we need to fit in into our beautiful long lives. What's that? 150 minutes, just over two hours a week, seven days a week, we could all do that, all of us. And we should all start doing it more so that we can sell the product, as it were, because if we're doing it and feeling it, we're the best um, you know, advocates to pass that information on to who we speak to. And we're all in a privileged position to be able to do that. So um, we'll be looking specifically um, at physical activity guidelines for, the, for adults and older ad adults. Um, 
Um, but you can see here that there are lots of different guidelines and they've been summarized in infographic formats. Um, and I, I've already touched on sort of the length of time that we need to be doing them, but these are all available. And when, when the slides come out a bit later, there'll be a direction as to where you can get these forms. That's correct, isn't it, Ruth? That yeah, be... it's all within the, um, the new health resource hub, which I'm gonna show a little bit later on. That is also very true. So let's just push on forward to that. So this graph, it, it's, it's encouraging because basically it's saying every movement counts. So what, what we need to take away from this, that even if 150 minutes isn't achievable right at the beginning, that actually every minute counts. And this graph shows, so shows the rate at, at which the physical benefits can be gained for every extra minute. Of physical activity so you can see that the steepest rate of increase in benefits is up to the up to those doing the 150 minutes which means um people who are inactive have the most to gain even a, a, a little bit helps a lot so when you first start you're going to you know you're really going to see a trajectory change um, and obviously those of us that do more uh, you know more of the guidelines of the 150 minutes you kind of plateau but you stay fit and healthy then you can start increasing your vigorous um, attempts to, you know, take it up a notch, as it were, which we should all do, challenge ourselves a little bit more when we can. So the, the message used to be, you know, 30 minutes, five times a week, but that's no longer used. Um, and it's often not useful to think about it in this way. So the small starting bits is walking to, you know, around your garden, if you're fortunate to have one, a park nearby, if, if, if you don't have a garden, you know, taking stairs instead of the lift, um, you know, walking a small section to work or to the shops, just remembering lack of, you know, less sedentary time, more movement. And, and actually, if you are a bit more sedentary, then even whilst you're sitting, you can still move. We'll get to that in a minute. But there, there are, you know, obviously individuals in our community that can't move as much, but they can in an armchair or a chair. And that's still, you know, very much, very much an option. So we keep I keep mentioning this sedentary time and um, I, I've used this analogy before. I'm going to do it here again quickly before we launch into more detail. But um, we're all, let's consider ourselves to be all fine, fine bottles of wine. And our fine bottles of wine, if we were to lie them on their sides like this, um, all the life sediments start dripping or falling down to the, to the side of the bottle. Let's say the bottle um, is our arteries or, you know, our arteries and veins. And the plaque is those fine sediments in the wine bottle. So the longer we sit, 20 minutes plus, those sediments start to fall and they, they cause the plaque in the arteri art arteries and veins. And the only way to keep flushing the plaque build up out so it doesn't cement into that and cause blockages is to move. So, you know, we're like a pump, the internal pump, the heart flushes the blood around and that pushes the plaque out the way, job done. So every 20 minutes, half an hour move. So that's the important thing to remember is that, you know, limit your sitting, even when we're at work, get up 20 minutes later or just stand up, do a couple of squats, push your arms up ahead, your, above your head, do it for yourselves first so that you can be the best you can be for others and avoid sitting for long periods. We've all, you know, got access to some form of um, the pay on demand, Netflix, Prime, whatever. Yeah, it's a great movie you're in the middle of, but just pause it because it's too long. Get up, make a cup of tea, stand on your tippy toes and raise your calves. These are all the things that you can pass on once you've activated them yourselves. So, um, you know, even I was saying as well to um, to Ruth recently that in the morning I stand up. I've got a laptop that I work from. So I, I stand and work in the morning at my um, wherever, where whichever surgery I'm at, I work at their sort of work top level. And I don't um, sit down generally to the after, in, until the afternoon if I do at all, but I'd stand working. So, you know, I'm typing everything up, standing at the work top um, and, um, I'm, you know, making calls. And, that, you know, that's uh, just doing that three hours or more a day, every day. It's 30,000. Yes, you heard that right. 30,000 calories per year burnt. So these are all the little tidbits that you can pass on. 
And then, and yeah, just to chip in there, we, see oh, we have been sitting down for 30 minutes. And obviously, um, Isabel and I won't stand up because we've got to keep our uh, our cameras on. But do please do feel free to have a little move around and um, do some of those little bits that Izzy's just been um, talking about while we carry it on the next couple of slides. Push your arms up, get up, have a little squat and and then sit back down. So, uh, yes, Ruth, good, good shout out. Um, so. This is really going to be um, one of the key things that we could all benefit from refreshing, um, you know, myself included. So these are these are about sort of the tips to overcoming the barriers that we often hear um, and we're going to cover in more detail. And it's it's about framing the discussion and, and active listening. So, um, you know, we want to find out what really stops individuals from being active and then we're going to garner all the tips and tricks if you like um and and pull out examples to overcome some of those uh, the barriers that they're going to um to, to put in front of us so the common barriers are the standard you know I, I don't have the equipment i don't you know don't i don't have the knowledge i'm worried i you know i, I don't have the money um child care costs i don't have access to internet there's a plethora of reasons and you know we're all um guilty of using some of them as well but th there are ways to overcome that it's just i think setting yourself a small goal and starting small is the key to success rather than having the big big you know picture to to, to get stuck into something that you probably won't adhere to um so small steps to build upon is the key so lack of time or, or space, feeling tired and having low energy, one of the barriers to being active. The social side, you know, concerned about what others will think. Now I hear about that a lot, um, you know, for, by people worrying about when they go to the gym and they've got, you know, they, they find it quite cliquey environment. Um, psychological, they're so low and motivation that the thought of getting started, you know, is the barrier. And technical, you know, no one wants to injure themselves more. Um, they, they want to know the technical know-how uh, of how to get involved. So these are really important barriers and, and real to individuals that come across them. And, and we're going to look at ways how we can overcome that with them. So tips for getting everybody started. I mentioned it before. We, we really want to set sort of goals and make a plan. So for instance, let's just pick something small here that I've just come across. Um, so I've got a lady who wants to visit her sister in, um, in the States. They haven't seen each other for 20 years. They're planning Christmas together this year. And she says that the sister on, on Teams looks so well and healthy. By the way, the sister lives in plastic population, California. So I don't know how much of that is real for the sister, but let's just say it is. But um, she wants to look trimmer. And so her goal is to lose three to five kg by December this year. So we've put things into place to achieve that. So that's a goal. And, and She's keen to do that because she's got a purpose. So that's setting a goal. And then we, her and I have made a plan towards making that happen. So we need to choose something that she enjoys and we'd need to start small to make the changes, build new healthy habits into our daily routine. The great outdoors, I mean, we're, we're all fortunate enough to be in Surrey. I mean, there's so many um, National Trust, Woodland Walks, brilliant parks, all free, get out, use, breathe in the fine air start slow build up gradually and pace yourself and listen to your body and more importantly if you can buddy up build a tribe that is the motivation to keep you going as well so however you choose to move it's all good for your health and well-being the small changes to your routine including small bursts of activity to get that heart rate up feel a bit warmer across your day will all add up and help you move more so whether it's 10, 10 minutes seated uh, exercises or yoga workouts in the morning or a cycle or walk at lunchtime with either your household, buddy up with a colleague at lunch, you know, playing more with the children in the garden if you've got one or go to the park and even moving around when you talk on the phone or brushing your teeth, stand on one leg to improve your balance. All of these things add up. So do something that you enjoy um, or, or something that you've wanted to try. I've, I've got someone just recently into kayaking because that's another thing that I love doing. So they bought themselves an inflatable kayak so that they can get on the river near their house. Fabulous. Um, you know, 
plan and goals those are the key things because without a plan and a goal you know the, the, the failure the, the failure rate's a bit high if you haven't got one of those and just repeat the bits that you enjoy daily try something new like I said you know this, this chap's trying the kayaking um, and, and build up those things to continue to motivate you all about moving more so that's what that slide covers just checking the time that we've got to so look Let's talk about some of the scenarios that we all come across here um, and, you know, our everyday conversations, really. So the key things we need to be thinking about is the specific wording we're going to put into conversations. So we kind of probably need to change our mindset a bit. I do fall into using the word exercise and I need to change that more so. And it's becoming much more of a habit. Um, active listening is key and then encouraging, supporting and signposting. Those are the three steps to, to change. So. Um, we're going to have some scenarios up here now. So this is going to be a poll as well, isn't it, Ruth, as I read out the scenarios? Yeah. Right. Here we go. So what could you say to um, to Natalie, who you're having a chat with? Um, and she is a regular visitor to the library, local library, 71 years old, and she lives alone. She mentions that she's now sitting down for much of the day. So potentially, what could you say? Um, you could say, have you been doing anything to stay active at home? Why aren't you doing any activities at home? And how are you managing to stay active? Now, there are no right or wrong answers. There are just um, potentially more effective ways of asking this question. So on your buzzers, <laughs> could you just select which answer you think might be more into the active listening stage so you can say here that um three quarters of you felt that how are you managing to stay active would be um the question that you would use and two people saying have you been doing anything to stay active at home so a bit of a mix great thank you um so it's saying that actually number three how are you managing to stay active is probably um, a, you know, a nicer question in the terms of getting, because you know, you're now going to build this conversation. So you, know, you were listening to the prompts and cues, this was a door opener, and it, it, this would probably be the, 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 the best way of, of carrying on the conversation um, and to get Natalie more engaged. So we're sticking with Natalie, and we've got some more um, scenarios here. So Natalie continues to say that she's struggling and she used to go out walking lots with her friends, but unfortunately that's all stopped for now. And her friends are doing more online classes. So what could you say? I, I really enjoy my online classes. Why don't you, you try that? It sounds like you used to enjoy your walks. How would you like to be active now? And could you start going for short walks again? So again, fingers to the buzzers, which, you know, are those questions do you think might be a bit more engaging and inviting a discussion? Fantastic. Okay, we've got a resounding winner um, this time. So um, yeah, it's um, number two. So um, bingo. So, you know, you've picked up on the change talk and you've active listened and you're not advice giving. So, you know, you're developing this conversation to lead to where the outcome is good for Natalie. Um, so we're going to move on. We've got one last one here. So Natalie says she's not sure what she can do at home. She doesn't have a computer, but she does mention maybe getting back into the garden. So you could say, I have a free resource pack that might be useful. Would you like to see it? Gardening sounds great. What's the first thing you could do to get started? Um, and you should be aiming to uh, be active every day if you can. So again, last last fingers to the buzzers. Again, we've got a bit of a, a bit of a mix here. So I'll just share the results. So we've got um, all but one person um, going for the second one around gardening sounds great. And then one person saying about the free resource pack. Great. OK, so. One and two, they're good. They're good openers, free resources. Gardening sounds great. What would you do to get starting? So, you know, you, you've led Natalie into a position where she now really has to consider that she's put herself forward to engaging more in the garden and you've supported that. And in addition to that, you've got some free resources to, to you know, strike whilst the iron's hot. So um, 
these are identified. Th this is a really good way of identifying the next steps to, to get Natalie into, you know, being more active with her living. So well done for us to remember for our own lives and you know for when we hear conversations when we do our follow-ups with uh, with the members of our community success never looks like that straight line we think it it does but it really doesn't in reality it, you know it probably takes a few stop starts you know we can be really committed for two weeks and stop for four then pick it up again but eventually you know to get that motor running and, and that mindset change, it takes a few starts and we should just continue to encourage all the way ourselves, our family and the members of our community through our roles. So it's just about trying and trying again, never give up. So here is the key. So national signposting, what's available? Um, <clears throat> so join the movement. Um, that was a com campaign, <coughs> excuse me, launched by Sport England in response to the COVID lockdown and um, it's an it's an app and it's also lots of ideas about getting active at home and also away from home so but this is a really um, great um, resource to to pass on to people that you're speaking to join the movement we are undefeatable amazing so this was also launched during lockdown and it's to inspire and support people with long-term health conditions to be active so it's a joint campaign with Sport England and lots of 20, actually, Richmond charities, group charities. And it includes real personal stories and ideas to get started. Um, a YouTube video playlist from partners and an activity planner, posters and leaflets. It's a phenomenal resource. And more importantly, you know, there are lots of individuals who've kindly offered up their stories to empower others who might be going through the same thing that you can, you know, sort of direct them to watch, watch it with, um, you know, encourage change in the moment whenever you can. I know time is, is always a commodity that not many of us have to, you know, to, to, to pass on. But if, if you see an opportunity with someone, you can just see them on the precipice of change. Why not watch this video with them if you can? It's really empowering for both of you to go through it. So, but for instance, in this particular um, slide, John um, here, he, he's got Parkinson's. So he does walking football. And as a younger man, John tells us he's always enjoyed football, um, which made his Parkinson's symptoms diagnosis even harder to accept. But football became a saving grace of sorts, not only helping him find ways to get moving, but also connect to others um, living with health conditions it's only an hour of the week but it makes him and his friends feel like they're old selves again which is fantastic as the neural pathways associated with previous play kick in um you know become reactivated because it remembers um he also tries to do other things like yoga to keep his muscles supple and and you know from spasming Geraldo's got a heart condition, Mina's got arthritis, um, and Julie and Peter, Julie has Alzheimer's. The great stories, um, you know, if you get a chance to have a look at them and feel empowered by them, please do. And, and you know, and definitely pass them on to, to your um, people in your community. So Stronger My Way um, is a new online hub from the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy. Again, it provides evidence, um, training and resources to support people getting stronger for professionals, um, evidence-based links to training resources, you know, a whole plethora of um, information for us to access. And there's obviously videos for the public that we can signpost to. So again, this will be on the links as we go out. The NHS Fitness Studio, I, you know, I can't compliment this enough, it's phenomenal. So um, it's a trusted, you know, source of information. It's got workouts for older adults, seated exercises, focuses on specific long-term conditions, advice, guidelines, workout and fitness plans, equipment free and 10 minute workouts, all on the NHS Fitness Studio, a fantastic resource. Um, this is the virtual village hall. Again, uh, you know, this is phenomenal. And it really does cover so many activities to, for mental and physical health. So there are, you know, celebrities in this as well. Sessions are led, you know, by some of them. But, it, you know, it's all about being active 
and having the information in your local sort of community as to what, where you can go and what you can do. But if you can't get out, there's so many online classes, yoga, dancing, linked to YouTube channels. I mean, 94% of, uh, this is an impact study, 94% of the uh, virtual village haulers had a positive impact felt that this had a positive impact on their mood and well-being you know that's great especially for those with long-term um, conditions they felt it really helped them um, as well to get started um, another app two key apps um, couch to five we've all heard of that one and active 10 so the couch to five really popular used by thousands of people to start jogging um, start with walking and then build it up over nine weeks that's the key and all the podcasts are downloadable they're free so that's the other thing that's important and active 10 is to build up walking and tracks and monitors your progress uh, for setting those all important goals and targets because we all need those um local signposting now this is key for all of us and it's all about the lo local signposting so we've got i mentioned it earlier our great outdoors in our areas, local parks, gardens, even the garden centres to walk around, country parks, cycling routes, so many online on, in, um, on the Surrey County Council website as well, cycling routes, the walking trails, they're all there as well, um, community allotments. Um, so yeah, a whole plethora of ideas that we can signpost for the great outdoors. These are handouts um, with signposting information on them that Ruth is also going to share out. But if, if you were to send these electronically, if one were to click on each of these individual tiles, it would take you through to the relevant um, website. That's right, isn't it, Ruth? Yeah. Good. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and allow Ruth to share hers. Is this the point that I do that, Ruth, yes, for you please, to take that would over? Be great. Yeah, that'd be great. This is really exciting, guys. So really listen up to this phenomenal. Here we go. OK, right. I'm just going to share my screen. I'm very aware we're running a little bit shorter time, so I will go through this quite quickly. But I'd really um, encourage um, people to have a look in the health resource hub um, when you get a moment so we've launched the health resource hub um, gosh it was back in March um, a couple of months ago now and um, the reason for doing so was um, partly for the reason you know already Isabel shown you six or seven really great national signposting um, opportunities but we're very mindful that um, you know you have very, very busy roles, you're seeing lots of people and you haven't got the time to be going through and trying to find the key information um, and, and you know, delving into every single website and seeing what's in there. So really what we've tried to do is to create the Health Resource Hub as a one-stop shop. So um, the whole aim of the hub is that um, if you would like any form of physical activity support, either knowledge for yourselves or resources and signposting for um, the people you're supporting in the community, that we would really um, like the Health Resource Hub to be your kind of um, go to place. Um, so it'd be great if you can get it bookmarked. Um, and um, yeah, I'm going to just take you um, take you for a little quick um, spin around the site now. Um, we gained feedback in um, the development of the site. We um, talked to a number of um, social subscribers, healthcare assistants, GPs, um, Surrey Coalition of Disabled People, um, and um, also a number of health and wellbeing coaches as well. So we really hope this is going to be a really valuable resource. So the first thing that we've done is we've structured the site by who it is you're looking to support. So we have a tab for supporting adults with long-term health conditions, a tab for supporting older adults. There's a big overlap with the two. Um, nearly 60% of people over 60 have at least one long-term health condition. So we felt it's very important to, um, like I say, to, to separate the tabs, but also you'll see there's lots of clicks between the two pages. And also this is to support adults of 18 to 60 who currently don't have a long-term health condition and, and long hopefully that will continue. And then we've got links through to um, Surrey Coalition of Disabled People, um, our um, Weight Management Service of Families, which is BY Best, which I mentioned earlier. And also we do um, work called Active Practices with um, DP practices across the county. So there's a link through to our resources and more information there. So looking specifically um, here, I'll just scroll down the page. Um, what we've got is a copy of all of those um, physical activity guidelines that Isabel showed you earlier on. So I know we're focusing on adults and older adults, but there's all of those um, infographics there that you can take a look at. 
Um, we'd also encourage you to um, sign up to our newsletter. Um, what we do is once a quarter, we don't bombard your inbox, but once every three months, we send out updates on upcoming training events, um, any um, relevant news, whether that be local or national. And also it's within the, um, the health newsletter that we actually talk about any updates to the hub. So new con that we put, content that we put into the hub. If you do go into the hub and you can't find what you're looking for, we'd really um, encourage you to send, um, complete this very short form. And I pick this up daily um, and that really helps us in terms of developing the next resources because this is, um, isn't a static site. We're hoping it will grow and evolve. And, and as you all know, there's um, new um, resources and um, information and studies coming out all the time. So this is literally being updated um, as much as new information becomes available. So if we just click into first um, here, so we've got supporting adults with long-term health conditions. So I'll click into here. And, and then we've got quick links down the page. So the first thing that you can see here is a consensus statement. So this is basically trying to reassure um, people. And we've got the data here in terms of if people are concerned because they have a long-term condition around the risks of being active. We've got that statement within here that you can either share with them or download. We then have, if I just click on the link here, we've listed um, 11 long-term health conditions. Uh, we're working on more. We've got one, um, the one around mental health, um, specifically um, depression and anxiety, which we're literally creating at the moment. So what you can see here, this is trying to take, Isabel already showed you um, a number of different resources and we try to bring it into one place. So if we look at arthritis here, you can basically click on, on a number. So if we look at arthritis at the top, what we've done is we've pulled out a conversation guide from Moving Medicine, which is a fantastic resource. We've pulled out different activity um, or different exercise and activity ideas for people that have arthritis, including a let's move for surgery um, guide. We've got specific e-learning module here if you're interested in learning more for your knowledge, if um, dependent on your area of work. We've got further training and guidance for health and exercise professionals. There's downloadable resources that you could give to um, the person that you were, you were supporting in terms of encouraging them to be more active. And then we've got the um, We Are Undefeatable Inspiring Stories as well. So again, we've gone through and we've pulled those out specifically for the relevant long-term health condition to make it hopefully really quick and easy for you to provide that physical activity support. Again, if we go back here into the, um, into the older adults, again, you can see we have some downloadable resources here and what we've done is we have um, got kind of thumbnails so again before you make the commitment to go in and download you can see what it is that um, the resources that we've got here we've also got all of our further training so if you wanted to look at some specific e-learning around active aging and living longer better that's all available there for you to access and then if we were to look within um, the section for Adults without a long-term health condition, that local and national signposting that Isabel talked about. We have the PDF, which you can download here, which I'll also send you by email afterwards. But also we've got um, the tiles here, which again, we keep up to date. So this is the, the most up-to-date version um, compared to the one that I will email you. Again, you can click through here. So what this doesn't do, this isn't saying to you there's a Pilates class in Camberley. This is talking about the types of different uh, physical activity and movement ideas um, for you to um, help support your community. So that's it. Like I said, I'm very aware of the time, so I'm going to stop sharing and go back to Isabel just for the last couple of minutes. So what we've covered today, I mentioned at the beginning, is you know the definitions and the benefits of physical activity, the guidelines, the practical tips, some practical tips and common barriers, the types of positive conversations that we need to be um, you know, practicing to develop and, and if we're not so already um, to have with um, our, the members of our community and all the signposting and resources. So I think the key thing to remember here is all of this is available to us as well. And if we're not doing enough for ourselves, then it's something that we should be thinking about more because we can't sell a product or a service or an activity or a lifestyle if we're not um, invested it, in it ourselves and for our own, own benefit. And, and we all want to be, you know, living longer, better and aging well and also being the best we can be for ourselves, number one, for our families and to do, you know, we've all 
signed up to these amazing roles and and it's about you know empowering others so you know the the proof is in the pudding as they say so um further free learning i think ruth ch touched on this um yeah. earlier in the professional hub so you know that that's available um and again how brilliant they are so the next steps for all of us is to consider talking we you know we might have someone in mind that we want to talk about this with and whilst you know it's sort of hot in our minds we're more confident to do that so you know think about how you can support yourself your team your colleagues you know the the the, the patients and members of the community that you're seeing talk to someone this week about being active you know make an activity goal for yourself and think about how you can embed physical activity into your to your role and your team you know I mean, I, you could be able to walk to a number of um, patients if you're doing home visits, if, if that's how your role's structured um, in your local community, more than sort of getting in the car. Have a think about that. Um, again, these are the two same questions we asked right at the beginning, if you'd be so kind as to answer them now. So on a scale of one to 10, how important is it having conversations about being active with others? Um, you know how is it important is that to you and again how confident are you in in now having these conversations about being more active with others if you could just complete the uh, the poll that would be phenomenal so the great news is that we've got lots more eights nines and lots of tens now in terms of the importance of um physical activity and from a confidence perspective again we've got um ranging rather than from three upwards we're up from six upwards and lots of people in nines and tens so thank you very much everybody for, for sharing yes, the feedback thank you wonderful and that is good um encouraging stuff so um finally really appreciate your feedback um you know these courses hopefully are, are good for all of us you know in in our roles so your you know feedback on for this survey would be much appreciated so you can either um scan the code or you know click the link now but if if you could just find the time now to do it that whilst as i say it's hot in your minds that would be fantastic yeah, I just, i'll just leave that up there i don't think um there's many more slides to go apart from no, that's literally you. that's literally it i think yeah so if, then, you, if you wouldn't mind just going to the last slide and then i can just get oh. it before i stop the recording i can just get the email address up for anybody that's watching the recording and wants to get in in contact that's the last slide. Fantastic. There we go. Great. Thank you.